welcome to the third segment video for module 5, Magnetic Field of a Solenoid. This video will include the objectives, tools and materials, basic theory, and data and processing for this module, and also the report format for the basic physics practice. The objectives for this experiments are, first, to identify the relationship between magnetic field and current, the second, is to identify the relationship between magnetic field and the number of wire turns in solenoid. Third, to determine the permeability constant or mu zero. Fourth, to study the magnitude variance of magnetic field inside and outside of the solenoid system. The tools and materials needed for these experiments are LabQuest interface, a variable DC power supply of 3 amperes, an ampere meter, magnetic field sensor, a double-ended crocodile clips cable, a slinky solenoid and its stands, and also a rheostat. Next is the basic theory. Given in this figure is a solenoid, which is a wire of conductor turned in a specified number of turns and also has a specified length, in this case is L. So when an electric current, in this case is I, is flowing inside a solenoid, the induced magnetic field is produced which occurs from factor resultant from each and every turns of the wire, which is given by these blue lines. In this experiment, we assume that the diameter of the solenoid is far less than the length of the solenoid. So in this case, we can use the Ampere's law to approximate and calculate the magnetic field by the center of the solenoid as given in the first equation which is B equals mu zero times I times N over L, in which B is the magnetic field magnitude, mu zero is the vacuum permeability, I is the current given to the solenoid, N is the number of turns, and L is the length of the solenoid. N, if you want to count the magnetic field produced by the solenoid's N, it has only a difference of the factor of half as seen here in the second equation. Next is the data and processing, starting with experiment 1, the relation of current toward the magnetic field. In this experiment, the length of the solenoid is fixed to 1 meters, in which the solenoid has 145 turns. In this experiment, we variate the current flowing through the solenoid from 0.1 amperes to 1 amperes each with an interval of 0.1 amperes so that we have 10 variations. For each variation, we measure the magnetic field by the center of the solenoid, so we will have the entire data given in this table. This data is then regressed, regressed linearly with y-axis is magnetic field and the x-axis is the current, so that we will have a linear regression equation as follows in which the gradient here shows the relationship between the magnitude of the magnetic field and the change in current, so that if we use equation 1 from the basic theory, we can determine the vacuum permeability constant as given below. Then, from the vacuum permeability constant we have from the experiment, we compare it to the reference value of 4 pi times 10 to the power of minus 7 tesla meter per ampere, so that we will have the error of the experiment as follows, in this case is 7.07%. Next, for experiment 2, we will determine the relation of number of coils towards the magnetic field. In this experiment, we fix the electric current to 1 amperes. Meanwhile, the length of the solenoid was variated from 0.6 meters to 1.5 meters, each with an interval of 0.1 meter for a total of 10 variations. We then calculate the number of turns per unit length of the solenoid, which in this case we will use a solenoid with 145 turns. And then we, we measure the magnetic field by the center of the solenoid from each variation so that we have the entire data in this table. The data is then regressed linearly, with the y axis is the magnetic field and the x axis is the number of turns per unit length of solenoid. So we'll have the following linear regression equation. Here, we knew that the gradient from the graph 
shows the relationship between the magnitude of the magnetic field and the change in the number of turns per unit length of solenoid. But that by using equation 1 from the basic theory, we can determine the vacuum permeability constant as given below. We do the same procedure as experiment 1, which is to calculate the error of the experiment result compared to the reference vacuum permeability value of 4 pi times 10 to the power of minus 7 tesla meter per ampere. So we will have the following error in this case is 3.15%. Next, for the third experiment, we determine the distribution of magnetic field inside and outside of the solenoid. The upper table shows the distribution of magnetic field inside of the solenoid in which the measurement was done in 11 different points, starting with the leftmost point labeled as 0 meters and the rightmost point of the solenoid labeled as 1 meter. The measurement was done in two different conditions, which is with no current and with a current of 1 amperes given to the solenoid. We will also do the same procedure for the measurement outside of the solenoid, in which we take one point, such as the midpoint of 0 0.5 meters and we measure the magnetic field at, at the outside of the solenoid by the right side and the left side, each with a condition of no current and a current of 1 amperes given to the solenoid. Lastly, I'll explain about the report format for the basic physics practice. In the upper middle, write down the module number and the title of the module. On the upper left, write down your name, name, class and shift, and also the assistant of your practice. Meanwhile, on the upper right, write down the day, date, and time of practicum. The report should include the lab condition, which is given on your data, experimental aim, experimental apparatus, a brief theory no more than a half of page, data and processing including the data given to you, analysis and discussion, and also the conclusion that you have from this experiment. That's all for this third segment video. Thank you for your attention.